if I die in the game, I die in real life. Gotta know that. And all ladies love Kirito. Yes! Apparently. That's, that's, that's the whole story. <laughs> and then you play another guy in Do Ra 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 where he, he loves the ladies or the ladies love him? Well, he loves the ladies and he believes the ladies love him, but oh. I think his pickup lines are pretty cheesy. The the booby the booby guy, right? L- what was it? Live by the booby, die by the booby? Oh, yeah, that's his motto. <laughs> Live by the booby, die by the booby. <laughs> Yeah. I, I think you had a good... Uh, has anyone seen the SAO outtakes? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so you have one really good outtake. Do you remember? I, I think so. Something about jiggling, right? <laughs> remind me, remind she's me. She's like, she comes onto the screen and she's pointing and her boobs are just like, <laughs> I'm jiggling! <laughs> so, it was so perfect. Anaplex lets us go crazy with outtakes. Like, they, they love it. So I, I just, I'm so grateful for that because, like, on other, with other studios, they just... They don't really like outtakes sometimes, but Anaplex loves them. They're like, do you, do you like, Kiroe, one of the producers, basically says, do you have uh, any outtakes for this? And I'm like, no, Kiroe, I don't think so. And she says, well, maybe we save that for end, okay? And I'm like, sure. So we have to actually come up with outtakes to please the client, which is a first. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's really awesome that they promote that because sometimes you you're just there. You have to kind of put your head down and work as fast as possible to get mm-hmm. the job done. And sometimes you have a little more leeway. And with yeah. these shows, you know, they give us a little leeway to fool around and, yeah. and try to make them laugh. It's which pretty is great. cool. So, I, is the mic on? Do we have that mic on? The the, the middle mic right there in oh, the middle yeah. of the thing. Okay. So it's up to you guys. If you're loud, you can just scream at us, and I'll just call on people. <laughs> or what would you guys prefer? Do you guys want to do, like, a line, or do you want to keep it more laid back, and I'll just call on people? Call on people. people. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start on this side of the room and work my way all the way over, and then I'll work my way all the way back. Good idea. I mean. kind of like the, the way I do it. I, I just do random. I just do random. Well, what I do is if people are just sitting there and they don't ask questions, I pick on anybody that I want, even if they're not raising their hand. Nice. And they have to ask a question. So, and, and they end up doing it. And then it actually does help because once people ask, like, random questions, that helps other people think, oh, wait, maybe I can ask about It helps, like, relax people. So it actually does work. But let's try your way. Well, it's we'll nicer. have to resort to that if there's no questions. Right? I know, okay. yeah. So I'm just going to start over here. Any questions, questions, questions? Okay, cool. Yeah. On, on any show? Huh. I don't know. Uh, a lot of booby jokes because I, I play a lot of characters with big boobs. Um, but I, I, I think... It's not really funny, but like when I, whenever I mess up, whenever I mess up a line, just to let the director know that I'm actually not, you know, that I'm paying attention, that I know that I messed up the line, I'll just blow a, like a giant raspberry. So I'll be like, I can't win without this. And that leads to them saying, okay, let's try that again. So, uh, but I, I, other than that, I have to think of like a really funny one. Bryce, do you have any? <laughs> I have some off the top of my head. I, I fool around a lot. Um, <laughs> So, I, I, during the recording of Blue Exorcist, I started doing this thing called bad anime reactions. Oh, no. So, in, in anime, you always do these, like, really interesting sounds. So, like, when their eyes move, you have to make a noise for their eye moving. So, it's like like a breath or something, like, very subtle. So, I would always do them really over the top. So, there's this one scene where Rin is, like dialing a cell phone, and I made an effort for every single button on the phone. So it was like this. <laughs> and just without without saying anything before, so like, like they had no idea I was going to do something like that. Like, they're just expecting a... And they got... <laughs> you got some aggression there, Bryce? Let it out, man. Let it all out. Bad anime. I love it. So at the end of that, there were so, like, the entire cast started doing it. So there's, like, all these outtakes of just bad anime reactions, like, like maybe five minutes. And they're like, we got to cut this down. Like, they cut out, like, so many of them, but they're, they're hilarious. I, 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 it's not one of my outtakes, but um, 
Anaplex also released um, Madoka outtakes. And, um, I mean, they didn't release it. Like, they showed it at Anime Expo, and I, th- I don't know if it's a bit. I think somebody recorded it at Anime Expo, so it's one of those recording of a recordings on YouTube or something like that. But one of my favorites is um, it's a scene where uh, Kyube has just finished talking to Madoka, saying, uh, you know, well, if you want to die for the world, let me know. And Kyube uh, jumps out the window and floats away. <laughs> and Madoka's, like, left in her room. It's a really dark moment. It's just after something terrible has happened. And she's so sad, and she's cradling her head in her arms. And all of a sudden, you just hear her say, I'm so unfriending that ever! <laughs> and I, it was the best outtake of the entire... Well, for me. Then there's another one with Homura, who's Christina V's character. And uh, if you are familiar with the show, you know that she kind of has a certain power. So she has two personalities, kind of. One that she used to be in in her future self, whatever. I don't want to spoil it. But she wears glasses in her older personality, in her original personality. And there's one point where she's having having this very intense moment, and I will do this, you know. And as she reaches up for her glasses, she starts saying, these glasses are so shaky. It's hilarious. It's really funny. (laughs) So, I, I saw a hand waving in the back, but you choose, Brace. Okay, okay, cool. We'll just go here first, then we'll work a wave yeah. back there. Yeah. Sure. Um, and this is cool because I haven't heard like your advice. For, oh, really? For I, I, I could have, it's so funny, because Bryce and I were just at uh, SAC Anime together, and I, it's so, I, when I don't get this question, I'm very surprised. Um, I, the first suggestion that I would give is theater. Theater is a huge part of that. It trains you for pretty much almost everything. Improv, uh, voiceover workshops, really getting comfortable with performing in front of people, because that's basically what we do. And you might think that, it might be easier to perform in front of, I don't know, like four or five people, you know, when we're in the booth, as opposed to when you're on stage and performing in front of thousands and thousands of people. But to me, honestly, it's the opposite because when we're performing in the booth, it's like, I don't want to say we're being judged, but in a way it's kind of like, we need to get this right. Whereas in theater, you can, you need to get it right, but you can still kind of dance around it we can't we can't do that in the booth and so it can be very intimidating and if you're not used to that and if it's not your thing to perform in front of people then either work on that or or choose another profession because that's all that acting is and voice acting is still acting it's another form of acting so just just remember that you know that it's not it's not just doing funny voices you know like there's already a Yoda there's already a Kermit the Frog like if it's if you can do impressions of them that's great that's awesome it's fun but that's not what's gonna get you gigs so that's that's my advice yeah I say um, practice as much as possible even if I mean if you can practice in front of other people that's ideal but if you can't just practice by yourself um, I like to make noises when I'm watching cartoons, um, and that's sort of my practice. Uh, everyone kind of got into the industry a different way, so like growing up, um, I used to prank call girls in middle school as other girls, really? <laughs> and, and trick them into thinking like I was their friends, and that was my training as a voice actor. <laughs> So if I could fool them, then I was doing pretty well. So it doesn't, I mean, you don't have to necessarily take a specific class. You know, training can happen at any time. So prank call people, that's cool. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I think you're... Bryce Pappenbrook is advising you to prank call people. Just FYI. <laughs> <laughs> Great. I'm going to get all these messages online. My son was arrested for prank calling people. He said Bryce told me to do it. I think it was you. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't break off people. At least be really good at it. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, we'll keep going. Uh, so we'll go right here, and we'll get back this way. Yes. Yes. Um, I 
mean, there was there was one part, if you remember that outtake uh, clip thing, uh, at the very end, where uh, Todd had just the most perfect outtake ever. Um, so he's like standing on, his character is standing on Kirito's head, and Kirito looks up and just flaps the, the character's name, which is Sugo, so I go, Hammercorn! <laughs> and he matched the, the flaps so perfectly. He says something like, I prefer that you don't call me that in this show. I prefer you call me your royal highness, Todd Effin Hammercorn! <laughs> and he's bleeped. That's awesome. Leaps can do so much. Oh my god, they add so much to the outtake. It's your outtakes are hilarious. I remember watching the SAO outtakes. I just haven't seen them in a long time. Yeah. So I'll have to after this panel I'll have to watch them again. Todd has another one that's just perfect where he's like, by the end of this line, I think my eye's gonna bug out and his eye goes <laughs> <laughs> Derek just did it. <laughs> it just like fits the, the sink so well. <laughs> Those were good ones. I was definitely laughing. Uh, okay. Yes. Cone. Well, Any video games you want to play that you don't have the time to play? Oh. I, I can start off, because I have one sitting at home ready to oh. be played, and that's Final Fantasy IX. I, I haven't played Final Fantasy IX, even though I voice Zidane, or Zidane, some people say Zidane, I say Zidane. Um, I haven't played it. And I said that at a panel a, a while ago, and someone gave me Final Fantasy IX. What? And it's sitting there, waiting for me to be played. I just have no time it's, to play it. It's like sitting there, like, hi, Bryce. Yeah. You gonna, you gonna, you gonna play me soon, dude? Like, I'm right here. And I walk by and I yell at it, like, no, I need to work. <laughs> It's like they're sitting, like, tempting you. You're gonna consume my entire life. Please, no. <laughs> Um, um, yes, I, well, there was a game that I did, uh, last year called Dragon Guard 3. Uh, it's a new Square Enix game. Um, I play the character 1 in that, and it is, I'm so messed up, it is so bloody and gory and awesome, and there's, the cast is absolutely amazing in it, and look, there's a colossal titan. Um, and, uh, it's... It's so beautiful. Like, Square Enix, man, they make such beautiful games. Yeah. And so I I just i am so excited to be a part of that. And I really want to play it so bad. But not only do I not have the time, I don't have a PS3. Oh, you got to get this. I know. I got to get this. Watch. Oh, my God. Is somebody going to give me a PS3? Oh, my God. That would be awesome. No. Um, but, no, I, I don't have one, and I really need to get one. But so that's that's one that I really, really want to play. And I really want to play Tales of Exilia and Tales of Exilia 2. Because that everybody's telling me what a fun game it is and all that. And there's games that my friends are in that I really want to play. Like, I want to play, um, what is it? Uh, Elder Scrolls? Yeah, Elder Scrolls. Uh, yeah. Um, and just so many other games. Do you know what game that I used to play all the time, a long time ago? On the, I don't remember if it was for PlayStation or PlayStation 2. Do you guys remember The Bouncer? <laughs> No, uh, PlayStation 2? Yeah, I used to play The Bouncer. That was a fun game. That was another Square Enix game. Or actually, back was it Square Enix back then? I think it was Squaresoft back then. But either way, so yeah, there's a ton of games that um, I want to play, but I don't have the time. But it's it's funny to know that you have a Final Fantasy IX tempting you at home. <laughs> it's like, come play me, Bryce. Come play me. All right, Charizard. Okay. He said that uh, he said that it would have to be with Red with, with, all, with, all, with all his Pokemon uh, versus Kirito offline, and Red without his Pokemon versus Kirito offline. So I want to know if we had to voice both characters. What do you think about that? Okay, can Red play all his Pokemon at once? Uh, <laughs> like, he, he, or does he have to throw one at a time? Um, let's just say that he can throw uh, them all at once because Kirito has proven that he can take on mobs without a problem. Yeah, Kirito would still win. Um, <laughs> Because he's cheating. <laughs> he has God Mode running. Oh. <laughs> no one can even hurt him. He's a beater. He's totally cheating. Um, 
He's like he's invincible in the game. I I uh, I got a similar question, but against Aaron Yeager in Titan mode, and in the game, Kitty Toe always wins. Um, offline, and and Red has no Pokemon. Right, right. So Chicken Toe's out there playing. This would be the worst fight ever. They just they just be like. It'd be a slap battle. Oh, true. True, yeah. Kirito does have that factor, so he would probably win. So what does that say, guys? That says that MMOs can teach you how to fight. (laughs) Yeah, there we go. (laughs) Thank you. I once, okay, one of the questions that I was so entertained by, I'm sorry, I have to tell them this story, Bryce. We were doing, a, was it a Titan panel at Zach Anime when they asked you the, the JYB versus you story? Oh, no, don't bring this up. No, okay, okay. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. Now you have to bring it up. Oh, no, okay. Well, it's it's funny because they're, they're both incredibly it, uh, trained in martial arts, but somebody asked, hey, Bryce, who would win in a fight, you or Johnny Young Bosch? And, and I'm like, what kind of a question is that? Like, that's, that's, I wouldn't want to see that. They're two of my dear friends fighting. That's terrible. I have no idea who would win. And, well, well, then people kept coming up saying, what if you fought this person? Did yeah. you win? Like, Bryce Pappenbrook fights exactly. around the world. And I'm like, Bryce isn't a fighter. He's a lover. So it, it was like, it was, it was weird because I, I can see, you know, they're, they both know martial arts, but I can't see it. So it was just, it was funny, though, because I know the both of them. So thank you for reminding me and, of that. Well, I answered, look up Bryce Pappenbrook Muay Thai head kick oh on my YouTube and God. tell me. Do it. You don't have to do it right now, but do it. Like, I, I, yeah, do it. Uh, I don't want to mess with this guy. <laughs> okay, yes! No, shoot. Go for it. Yeah! I think that show is perfect for kids, but they won't get all of it, so adults can watch it too. It's perfect for everybody, and the toys are amazing. Have you seen who's who's seen Tenkai Nights? Okay, if you have not seen the show, please go check it out because it is so good. The cast is ridiculous. I mean, Steve Bloom, Crispin Freeman, Johnny Young Bosch, Todd Haberkorn, Ben Diskin. I mean, it just keeps going and going. Um, it's it's really, really good. So, so I would say Tenkai Nights for kids of all ages. There we go. And I hope they're doing a season two. They put out something on Facebook saying, like, Check us out in 2015. Like, I don't know what that means. I hope it means season two. <laughs> but we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Um, yes. Hi, my name is Annie. So I wanted to ask you between Asuna or Pikachu, which would be your ideal girl? Okay. Now, are you, are, and Annie's in there too? Oh, this just got weird. <laughs> now, are you asking me, or you want me to answer as my characters? As me. Oh. <laughs> yeah, no pressure. You just want me to get punched in the face, don't you? <laughs> I, I think all three actresses carry shanks. I'm definitely going to get killed if I answer this wrong. Well, Lauren's within punching range, so I'll say Annie is a great, <laughs> a great character <laughs> to, to turn into a beautiful titan. That's the kind of date I'm looking for. There you go. <laughs> Get weird. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> so weird. <laughs> um, 
but uh, yeah, in, in all honesty, it's tough to pick between those three characters. Three three great characters, and really, I don't want to get stabbed. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, he doesn't want to get stabbed. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, so we'll keep moving this way, and then we'll come back. Uh, yes. Blue shirt. Yes. <laughs> I'm just like, yes, you're right there. So bad, excited, and like super So it all comes with the territory. Um, for Sword Art Online, there was a ridiculous amount of screaming as well. And what we would do is deliver all the speaking lines and then save the last 15 minutes of every session just to scream. Um, so the screams happened over a period of time. Um, it wasn't like I went from just speaking normal to screaming as loud as possible because then the next normal speaking line, Kirito would sound 50 because I was dying after those screams. Um, same thing for, for Aaron. And I'll tell a quick story because I know you like yes, this yes, story. Yes. Um, I was going to ask you to do it. <laughs> so there's one particular scream in Attack on Titan that's really ridiculous. Um, Aaron gets this pole that goes through his body, and he doesn't pull it out like this. He goes this way through the pole. And as he's doing that, he's screaming like, ah, like so, and his face is like distorting. So it's this huge scream. So we get to the scream, and uh, it was about lunchtime. So Mike goes, yeah, let's, let's break here for lunch. So um, we all go out for some burgers. We go to this place called Muya Burger. Um, do they have Muya Burgers here? No. no. Okay. It's, it's a place in Texas. They don't have them in L.A. either. Um, so I love sweet potato fries, and they had sweet potato fries on the menu. So I, I asked Mike, hey, you want to split a, a sweet potato fries? He goes, sure. Um, so I order a burger and then the large sweet potato fries, and everything's bigger in Texas. <laughs> the large sweet potato fries. It was literally a tray just piled up with sweet potato fries, and Mike and I finished the entire tray. <laughs> so we get back to the booth, and uh, first thing up is this massive scream. So I go to scream, beep, 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 ah! <laughs> and I just goes, yeah, let's try it again. Uh, so I go, okay, here we go. Ah! I physically could not scream because I was so full of sweet potato fries. I could not get enough oxygen into my body. So he's like, yeah, let's come back to this later. So the next day when I was less sweet potato fry -y. I did the scream in one take. Just got it. But I learned, do not eat a mountain of sweet potato fries if you have to scream like Aaron Yeager. <laughs> it's true, I was there. <laughs> and I, I just, it, it was so funny because he's, he actually, it's going to sound weird, but he actually, when he was trying to scream, it sounded like a guy that had a steak through his chest. Rather than, you know, what Aaron sounds like when he's pulling it, you know, he, obviously you can hear like, oh my God, like you sounded brutal in the, like the final uh, man, like it was, br right, you guys, like if you've seen it, it sounds so painful, but it, it just sounded like, ah, like, like, like God, so full. And it was, I mean, it sounded great, but it was just so funny because I know that pain, but it's, the weird part is, is that you can't. You can't be overfed before a session, but you can't not eat anything because your stomach's going to make noises if you don't eat anything, you know, and the mic picks up everything. <laughs> so. So, so eat somewhere between nothing and mountain of sweet potato fries. Yes. In that range, you're safe. <laughs> <laughs> so anytime I see sweet potato fries, I think of price. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, in the back. Y you. You. <laughs> I, 
just call it two ra ra ra. Someone said that. Can you can you just call it two ra ra ra? I'm like, that's awesome. <laughs> um, I think the hype is huge. I watched the first episode and it was really really good. And I'm crossing my fingers that it gets an English dub. I really hope it does because that's an awesome show and I want to pick up more ladies. Yeah. <laughs> there you go, man. Um. Yes. So we'll go one, two. Yes. Um, do you have a favorite scene of Sword Art? Uh, yes, actually, I remember it. I don't remember the lines, but um, <clears throat> it was when Sakuya is talking to, I don't remember his name. He's the guy that looks like the Elf King in Lord of the Rings. Uh, you know, with the white hair, I think. Yeah. Uh, green Yeah. Shirt? You think so, possibly. Well, he's talk. She's talking to him through the mirror. Yeah, that guy. Yeah, I I love that scene because I'm so snarky in that scene. I remember that specifically because I'm like, oh yeah, she sounds like a villain in this scene, but she's not. It's a you know like twist. It's really cool. That was my favorite scene. <laughs> um, I I like the scene. I think it's episode four where Kirito is walking across the bridge, and he's getting attacked by all these guys, and they're just not even doing any damage to him. <laughs> yeah. That's... Bryce, isn't there, isn't there a scene where, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't there a scene where, jokingly, uh, Sakuya and, is it Christina's character? Yeah. The, yeah, aren't they, like, rubbing up against you or something? That was funny, too, because I'm like, yeah, that's Bryce and that's Christina. It's funny. So. They're... There's an outtake from that scene. Yes, I don't remember what it was, I, but... I think I remember. I think I was just like, boobs. <laughs> <laughs> boobs. Boobs. And more boobs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, a character they should bring back, like, to life, like, that died? Oh, I know that in the, in the, in the books, they go way more in-depth into different characters and different things that happened in Aincrad. Um, I mean, it would be amazing if they rebooted the series, uh, similar to, like, what they did with Full Metal Alchemist. Like, if it started over, and then they went more in-depth to everything, like, that would be really cool. Um, and there are a lot of really amazing characters in the show. Um, uh, that's one of the things that I like about the show. Um, it's pretty incredible how, within one episode, you can become attached to a character. So, like, Sachi. Uh, like, oh. Seriously, I mean, you just did Sachi that character. die? Yeah. Oh. It's pretty, and then he's just like sitting there crying at the end with this message playing back to him, like, and this song, um, the Christmas song. Um, oh. So, it, but really, when I watch like TV, like I, I watch like Walking Dead, and they introduce a character, and then within the episode, that character gets eaten by a zombie. I'm just like, yep, knew that was gonna happen. Um, but in this show, for some reason, there's characters that you just get attached to. You're rooting for them, and it just doesn't work out. Um, I, I thought that was one of the, the strengths of this show. Titan's not like that at all. Well, I mean, you know people are dying. You don't exp I mean, that, that's the kind of show, like, you think, okay, people are going to die. But you don't really expect them to kill off all these people. Yeah. I mean, episode five, I, I said this yesterday, you freaking Game of Thrones me. <laughs> I cannot believe you just did that. Uh, did you tell the story about uh, about showing Samantha that, about how she didn't know about it? <laughs> so, um, I, I watched Attack on Titan um, when it was coming out in Japan. So, I, I had seen the entire series before uh, I knew I would even have an opportunity to work on the show. Um, my wife is not 
into anime as much as I am. Um, so she had not seen any of the show. She just knew I was working on it, and I was like, the show's really cool. I want you to watch it. So she's like, okay, I'll, I'll give it a shot. So um, we get to episode five, and I'm like, watch this episode really close, and wait, am I spoiling this for anyone? No, everyone knows. Okay, Aaron dies. He's dead. He's dead. So I told my wife, well, what'd you think of my performance? That was great, right? And she's like, you can't be dead. <laughs> and she's like, I know you're not dead. And I'm like, no, no, he's gone. And she's like, you recorded more than that. And I'm like, no, it's all flashbacks. <laughs> And it worked! <laughs> yeah, she, so, I'm like, just just watch the next episode. So she, so she watched episode six, and it's all flashbacks, and she's like, I'm done! I don't want to watch the show anymore! That's it! <laughs> and I had to, like, beg her to come back and watch it. I was like, no, I'm just kidding! He'll, he'll come back somehow. I promise. <laughs> and I convinced her to watch the rest of the show. And she loved it. She loved it. She, she loved Attack on Titan and loved Sword Art Online, like... And she is not someone who watches anime, so I, I think that's that's really cool. Yeah. Um, okay, going this way, yes. Gun girl? Gun girl. <laughs> that's what I'm looking forward to. <laughs> okay, I gotta know what? Okay, so... <laughs> The, uh, for anyone who hasn't seen season two, I'll try not to spoil anything. Um, they go into another game, okay. um, and this game is a world of guns. So it's another RPG, but it's called Gun Gale Online. Mm -hmm. um, and there's this really creepy bad guy that's murdering people in there. Um, so Kirito goes in almost like a detective working with the FBI to investigate this murder. And when he goes in, because he's so lucky, he gets a female avatar. Oh. So there's, there's one particular scene that I really, really hope I get to play. Um, I mean, he has long black hair, and uh, there's these guys, like, checking him out. Oh. And he turns around, and the screen turns pink, and he goes, cheer for me! <laughs> That's amazing. The, the outtakes that are going to be in, around that scene... <laughs> Um, but I really hope it happens. Um, I know that the same Seiyu in Japan played Kirito as a girl, um, so I'm hoping they recast me, but I don't know until they say, hey, can you work on Monday? That's when I'll find out. So, everyone cross your fingers, knock on wood, all that stuff. Think good thoughts, because I really want to do that. Um, actually, I'll, I'll tell a story about Monica. Oh. Um, when they were recording uh, Monica, I was working on a different show uh, in the same building, and I, I walked over to talk to the director and the producer, so Alex and Hiroe, and I said to Alex, hey, what are you, what are you guys working on? And he's like, oh, it's this really cool magical girl show, and I said, I want to be a magical girl, <laughs> and he looks at Hiroe like, huh? And Hiroe goes, mm -hmm. <laughs> so I was not allowed to be a magical girl. Aww. But I now, think, Sword Art Online 2, come on, Magical Girl. <laughs> this is about as close as I'll We want to make Bryce's dreams come true of being a Magical Girl, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll keep working back this way. Yes, right there, yes. Um, well, I was totally surprised that I got to work on the show, because Pokemon... Uh, typically recorded in New York, and I live in Los Angeles, so I was nowhere near uh, the original series. But for Origins, they wanted an entirely different sound. So when the audition came through, um, I was like, sweet, Pokemon. I didn't think I would be able to even read for something like this. Um, and I went and watched the first episode in Japanese, and I'm like, wait, I know what's going to happen. I played Pokemon Red when I was a kid, and I knew the whole story, and it's exactly like the Game Boy game. So I was like, this is so cool. I really hope I get to work on it. But I, I didn't, like, attach myself to any particular character.
because most of the time you don't book the things you audition for. But when the call came in, I was just like, yes, this is so cool. I'm like the OG Pokemon master. <laughs> so, yeah, it was, I mean, it was super cool when that came through. Um, okay, we'll go here and then keep working back. Yes. Can we mention all the series and shows we've worked in? I'll answer that one. Yes. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Way too long a list, dude. <laughs> but, but actually, um, in, in all honesty, Wikipedia knows much better than we do. Or AnimeNewsNetwork.com. Or, or .net? .net. I don't know. Anime, news, anime news Network. Or IMDb. One of, one of those. Um, because, I mean, do you know all the roles you've played? Hell no. I know, like, m m some of them, like, some of the roles that I've played are, you know, Annie in Attack on Titan, Kyoko Sakura from Madoka Magica, Lychee Fei Ling in Blaze Blue, uh, Leia in Tales of Exilia 1, Tales of Exilia 2. Seriously, I, I, I can keep going until I forget, but, but there's too long a list. Uh, but that's only a couple of them. Um, yeah. Do you yeah, know all the characters I, you play? There's no way. I, I've been voice acting since I was eight years old. Um, <laughs> I can barely remember what I did yesterday. <laughs> It's true. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, but, but really, uh, just Google us. We'll pop up. Google's my best friend. Yes. Have you ever cosplayed? Um, well, I didn't cosplay. However, uh, I went to Yomacon this last year, and Yomacon is in Detroit over Halloween weekend, and I had a makeup artist uh, on the convention staff do the... Who's seen the whole thing of Attack on Titan? Oh, I can't say. Did make up on me. That's all I can say. So, so I know, right? He did, he, did, he did very special makeup on me as one of my characters. So it was very fun. Have you ever cosplayed, right? Actually, you were there when I cosplayed. Um, we threw a party at a club. Oh, that's right. Um, we, we did this thing. It was called Fandom Society, and it was... Me, uh, Giancarlo Volpe, who's uh, done a million shows, and Dante Bosco. Uh, Rufio! Rufio! Uh, so, we, we had this idea of throwing a, a party, um, a cosplay party, at a club in Hollywood. And we did it, and it was right after they announced me as Aaron, so I cosplayed as Aaron. Um, I had to. I had to. And... Uh, the, the the people who helped me put the cosplay together, they had a wig for me, and they put the wig on my head, and it was so itchy, I was just like, oh, the wig fell off. <laughs> so, so I had the full cosplay for maybe about 20 seconds. But he wore the cape all night. I sported the cape the entire night. Yeah. All night, and it was, it was awesome. I freaked out when I saw it. I was like, I want one. That's so cool, Bryce. It was awesome. It was um, really fun. Yeah, that was a fun, fun party. Um, okay, we'll keep going, working this way. Yes, way in the back. Be louder. Favorite character to voice act that we've played? Do you have a favorite? God, really? <laughs> um, that's like asking me to list all of my characters that I've played. Um, I, I don't have, I, I don't know, do you have a favorite? I, I can't. I answer the same way, like, I can't pick one. They're all battling for who's the favorite in my head. Right? Um, I mean, it's so difficult to get work. I just like to eat. So I really appreciate any work I get in this industry. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's, I, I just answer it by listing off a bunch of characters that I love. Yeah, me too. It's, it's a cop-out, but totally, that's the same thing I do. Like, like I, I'm still, like, on, I, I'm still feel like I, you know, that I, how do I say this? The best way for me to say it is I'm still feeling that high from being uh, cast in Attack on Titan. So Annie's definitely on top of there. Um, uh, oh, my gosh. Um, one from Dragon Guard 3, as I said before. Uh, Kyoko's definitely up there, but that's just because she's a total badass. Um, but so is Annie. Um, just so many characters. Like, I feel so fortunate that I have, like, played so many awesome, awesome characters. <clears throat> Yeah, just there's there's too many to list. I, I can't pick a favorite. I can't. It, it would seem unfair, and it wouldn't be true. It would feel like I was lying if I said, this is my favorite character, because it's one of them. So, 
Um, yes, uh, Richard. Yeah. Who's winning the battle? <laughs> Definitely not me. <laughs> Wikipedia knows the answer. <laughs> Wikipedia knows all. Um, but, but really, we're like crazy people. Because we go in this soundproof booth and we just scream things into this microphone by ourselves. So yeah, we're a little crazy. Yeah, just a little bit. Um, yes. As Annie and Aaron, what, what kind of dating advice would you give each other? Have you seen the show? <laughs> Stop <laughs> killing my friends. <laughs> Grow a pair. <laughs> have you seen the other Titans? <laughs> they don't have a pair either. <laughs> Um, I'm trying to think of another one. Hmm. <laughs> no, I can't think of another one. That was the best I got. <laughs> or no, I got one. Stop yelling. We can all hear you. You're right next to us. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> ah! <I'm sorry. laughs> yes. How did I what? Any I don't I don't know, huh? Well she's short? She's taller than Levi. Oh that's how I account for it. If only Matt were here. <laughs> that's the best answer. <laughs> um, yes. That's a really good question. Um, you know, Caitlin and I were just talking about some of the shows that we used to love. Uh, I wouldn't say that it, it inspired me to do what I'm doing now, but um, a show that, two shows that I think were really inspiration for, like, voice acting were Gargoyles and Batman the Animated Series. Yeah, man. Harley is one of my dream roles, either Harley, Catwoman, or Poison Ivy. So... Huh? So, oh, yeah, there you go, man. So, uh, Bryce, what about you? Any shows that... Yeah, I grew up on Dragon Ball Z. Yeah! Who's your favorite character? Uh, I like Trunks. Really? Yeah. Vegeta's my favorite character. Yeah, yeah, Vegeta, yeah. Did anybody see Dragon Ball Z Battle of Gods? So good. I see that. I haven't seen it. Movie night. Yeah, <laughs> it's awesome. Have, have you ever been on a panel with Chris Sabat? Have I? No, but okay. no. I, I did a panel with him, and it's the funniest thing whenever whenever someone tries to get him to say it's over 9,000. Like, he is the best troll. Oh, like, yes. I, I don't even know, like, how he, his timing was this perfect, but, like, this guy came up, and he just kept going back and forth, and he just would not say the line for the <laughs> longest time, and it was hilarious. Like, it... it I think you'll be able to find it online if you like YouTube, like Sabbath Trolls. <laughs> Sabbath Trolling. There could be so many results for that. It's, it's hilarious. <laughs> Sabbath so, is a hilarious human being. Um, yes, right here. Um, you know, that's hard to say. Um, I know what the uh, say you did in Japan. I mean, it didn't necessarily sound like a little girl. It sounded almost just like a more feminine mm. version of himself. So if I get to work on it, I'll just have to wait and see where they place me. I mean, I know I can put my voice way up high, like, you know, very comical. Um, but I 
doubt that they're going to have me play him like that. Um, huh. I don't know yet. I don't know. I'll have to, really, I try not to think about things too much before I get in the booth. I just kind of step in, see the line, see the scene, and just go with my gut. Um, and that's just sort of how I was trained. I, I never went to a school for acting. I never, I actually just signed up for my first voice acting class. It was a goal of mine to take an acting class this year. I've never taken an acting class before. So I thought, might as well check this thing out and see what it's about. Um, so the way I was sort of trained is I would just get thrown in the booth and just do whatever came out. Um, so I, I feel like I just go with my gut. And, and see what happens. So I, I don't have an answer yet. Um, yes? Uh, after you guys are done recording and your shows actually come out, do you ever produce uh, forums and message boards uh, and blogs all and looking for reviews of the dub? Do you? No. <laughs> uh, for a couple reasons. Um, one, no. Uh, the best way to put this is that fans can be very passionate. Very passionate. Very passionate. Um, and, and honestly, it's like, I, I'm not sure how to describe it. No, the basic answer is no. The short answer is no. But it's mainly because um, not only the fans are entitled to their own opinions. You have your own preference. If you want to listen to the sub, that's great. If you want to listen to the dub, that's great. Um, and if you want to express your opinion online, that's totally cool, too. Um, with me being a harsh critic myself, like when it comes to TV shows that I love, I can kind of understand it. Uh, but it's one of those things where if I were to read some of it, um, with me knowing the people that are involved in it, knowing the people, knowing how hard they've worked on it, I probably, knowing me, would it would kind of bum me out, to be quite honest with you, if I read certain things. So I would feel the need to defend those people, but that wouldn't do any good. Um, just because it, it's it sucks sometimes, I'll be honest with you. Like, but I understand. It's like you guys love these shows that that we are a part of, and and you don't you know it changes scary, and you don't want it to be different than what you love. And and I totally get that. But just sometimes, I guess, it's it's just, you know, a little, it's hard to digest, I guess, sometimes. But in short answer, no, I really don't. So I don't even know what people are saying. So I think that's good. Ignorance is bliss sometimes. So. Um, I, I'll look at Anime News Network. Like, I'll, I'll look at that to see, like, what the review of the shows were and what they thought and their opinions and stuff. Um, as far as, like, searching in blogs to see if people are, like, talking about me, nah, I don't really do that. Um, I... I mean, I, I usually get my feedback at cons, and it's awesome when I'm at cons and people are excited about the things I've been doing. Um, so, yeah. I actually have, a, in, in addition to my answer, so the one time that I actually saw feedback on uh, Titan was when they released the trailer for it, uh, before box set one or two, I don't remember, and um, good old YouTube, uh, I was just scrolling through the comments, just reading it, you know, oh, this sucks, and blah, 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 all that fun stuff. And all of a sudden, I'm reading, and bam, spoiler, I'm like, oh, oh, that's terrible. Like, no preparation whatsoever. It was like, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, oh. I was bummed for the rest of the day. I'm like, man, that's terrible. You know, so that's the only time I've read comments or reviews, so, Yeah. <laughs> um, so we'll keep working back. We'll go uh, here and then there. Yes. Have you met yeah. Jeremy? Oh, yeah, plenty of times. Yeah. Yeah, Jeremy plays Asuna. Um <laughs> Who's also, she's also a uh, Sailor Venus now, too. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, so she's... Jeremy my, played a mom? She's my virtual girlfriend and my mom. Oh, that's weird. But it's anime. It works. And apparently my sister, according to someone at another convention, who came up to her and said, "Is your where's your brother right now? And she's like, uh, in Texas. And... 
She's like, no, 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 your real brother, Bryce. And she's like, no, Bryce isn't my brother. We're like brother and sister. And she's like, no, he's your brother. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> and she responded with, yes, he is. <laughs> yes, he is, darling. Yes, he is. Um, Yes. Uh, I saw a little bit of Dot Hack. Uh, at the time when it came out, it wasn't my cup of tea. Like, I understand how awesome it is, but at the time, I was more into uh, an older show called Fushigi Yugi. Anybody remember Fushigi Yugi? Yeah, uh, so, but that was way before Dot Hack. But um, I didn't watch Dot Hack, but I know it's pretty hardcore. So, like, hardcore is in, like, there's a lot of drama in it and all that stuff. So, um, has anyone seen Dot Hack Sign Legend of the Twilight Bracelet? It goes way back in the day. Well, I play Shugo in that. Um, it was a much younger me. I think I was 13, 14. Aww. So, yeah, I watched that one. Um, <laughs> but I, I haven't seen the other shows. Um, you said Log Horizon, and what was the other one you said? Oh, Excel World. Oh, Excel World. Oh, I was in Excel World, but I, but small character. Like, one of the RPG players. I she, I don't remember who she was, so. I'm, I'm kind of interested in Excel World because um, I heard, like, some rumor out there in the atmosphere that there's going to be some sort of crossover between Sword Art and Excel World because it's the same creator. And do you guys think that the characters in Excel World are related to Kirito and Asuna? Oh. Who, kn who knows? Who knows? Interesting. Um, okay, this side. Yes. Yes, we'll go one, two. Yeah, I think as artists, we tend to be very critical of ourselves, so we go back and watch stuff and kind of be like, mm -hmm, I wish they would have taken that other take, or whatever, you know, but you have to kind of trust the director in that aspect of, they know what the show's about, they know what it should sound like, they have a vision for it, uh, and if the client is talking to them and producer is talking to them, then they also know what they want as well, so uh, do you have an answer for that, Chris? Uh, yeah, I mean, I've... I've grown up voice acting, so I listen to stuff that I did when I was a kid. Like, I worked on Trigun. Have you guys seen Trigun? You worked on Trigun? Yeah. So, I play young Vash in Trigun. Oh. So, um, and Johnny is, is Vash yeah, the Sempede. Yeah. So, I, I listen to that and I just laugh. I'm like, I sound like a little kid, but I was a little kid in the booth. Um, but it's, it's kind of cool watching that and then knowing that I'm the older brother in Blue Exorcist. It's nice. Um, we have like five minutes left. We have five minutes, so a couple questions. Yes, you were next. I haven't. I've only. I haven't seen it. Um, I got misty. I got misty. Like like a little bit. I felt it. I felt it like tearing up in there. Um. Yes. How do you go about getting gigs as a voice actor? Well, it, it depends on if you have an agent or not. Um, I do not have an agent, so for right me... Now. What, right now. <laughs> right now. Um, Bryce and I had this conversation yesterday. Um, if you do not have an agent, then really it's just about the connections that you have, the networking that you do. You want to try and meet as many people as you can. Respectfully... Don't try and shove your way into meeting them and stuff. Don't be obnoxious and all that. But, you know, you want to try and meet as many people as you can and gain experience. Experience is so important. Wallace Sessions, um, what does Wallace stand for again? I forgot. Wallace? Yeah. Um, I don't know if it stands for something. Oh, really? It's I thought like, it's, it's good for something. It's background noise. Right. It might stand for something, I just don't know. I, do, I don't even know either. What? Okay, um, but Walla is um, pretty much, you know, if there's a, if there's a, like what these guys are doing, talking in the background, that's what Walla is, pretty much. It's in the middle of a scene, and then you hear people talking in the back, that's exactly what it is. Uh, that gains a lot of experience because it helps you 
um, know about the timing of specifically like anime, for example, helps you get used to the timing, get used to the beeps without actually having to be the only one to talk. Um, and it I helps a lot you... of that stuff. <laughs> yeah, Walla's is great. Um, but it really depends on your networking and your connections. And for those of you who don't know what networking is, pretty much um, it's basically when you try and, and meet directors, uh, writers, whichever. Like, that's basically what it is, meeting people within the industry and all of that. So do you have anything to add to that, Grace? Um, I mean – Getting an agent is very important, um, and the agents are the ones who get you the auditions. So, like, yesterday, my agent sends me an audition at the end of the day saying, rush job, audition for this. So I went back to the room, covered myself with the blanket, and did an audition in my room. Um, so, you know, agents are extremely important. Um, yeah, I yeah. mean, I think that's, that's answered the question pretty well. Yeah. Okay, so I know there's lots of questions left. I'm so sorry that